A lot to get to tonight, so let's get started. This first is an open question. So in 30 seconds, without telling us that you try too hard or that you're a perfectionist, what is your biggest weakness and what are you doing to address it? I would suggest the fact that I lack a formal education. My father died when I was a lad. My mother could not afford to educate me formally, but I read. And what else? I surround myself with the most illuminated, brightest minds in United America, uh, Hamilton, Jefferson, Randolph, Knox, and others. I believe in the arts and the sciences. I have continually urged Congress to form up an institution of higher learning in this nation, a national university. I wish that I could have attended. You had some very strong words to say yesterday about what's happening in your party and what you're hearing from the two gentlemen we've just heard from. Would you repeat it? Sir, I am not certain that I would ever use the word crazy. Uh, that said, there are individuals that, well, they say the most beautiful things, but they never really do anything except foment faction and division, and dare I say political party, which does little but raise the interest of party above the interest of the nation. I would suggest to you that the Articles Confederation, we had to scrap them in favor of making a new constitution because it promoted factionalism and division. And this, this will not work for America. For America, we must come together, e pluribus unum, out of many, one. I just wondered why you think we should hire you now. Well, you did it before, and I believe in making America great. As a matter of fact, I made America great. Why should the voters believe the promises that you're telling them right now? I don't know if you ever heard a story involving a cherry tree written by a fellow named Parson Mason Weems. It involved a young child cut down a cherry tree was challenged as to who had done that, and he fessed up to it. That child was myself. Honesty is always the best policy. If subsidies are good enough for Ohio companies, why aren't they good enough for companies trying to compete overseas? You know, sir, I believe that competition improves products. It reduces prices. That said, there is great competition by America from Europe, particularly Great Britain. And so I do believe in promoting American companies in any way, shape, or form that we can. We will do well when we engage in commerce with every nation. Do you want to get Congress involved in monetary policy, or is it time to slap the Fed back and downsize them completely? What are your thoughts? What do you believe? When Congress is involved in monetary policy, it invariably becomes political, and that is not a good thing. We should not have monetary policy engaged in election cycles and in campaigning and in political rhetoric of any kind. What we should do? Leave things to Colonel Alexander Hamilton. Let's talk about marijuana. We're broadcasting from Colorado, which has seen $150 million in new revenue for the state since legalizing last year. Governor Hickenlooper was not a big fan of legalization, but he said the people who used to be smoking it are still smoking it. They're just now paying taxes. Given the budget pressures in Ohio and other states, is this a revenue stream you'd like to have? Uh, marijuana? I assume you are speaking of cannabis sativa. Uh, I grow hemp. Uh, every farmer I know grows hemp. We use it for a wide variety of things. We, we use it for fabric. We use it for rope. We make soap. We make varnishes out of it. It is exceptionally useful. If you want to learn more about this, go to mountvernon.org slash hemp. Should the federal government play a larger role in helping to set up retirement plans for these workers? I would suggest to you that as I have advocated to the Congress on behalf of veterans of our War of American Independence who deserve pensions, promised pensions, 
I believe that all individuals that work in a earnest way towards the public good should be given the same consideration. Civic virtue is not enough to put food on a table. Daily fantasy sports has become a phenomenon in this country. We'll award billions of dollars in prize money this year. But to play, you have to assess your odds, put money at risk, wait for an outcome that's out of your control. Isn't that the definition of gambling, and should the federal government treat it as such? Well, I am of two minds on this subject, and it is situational. I banned gambling of any sort in the army. We need order and discipline in those situations. Privately, well, I have enjoyed a game of chance myself from time to time, owned a horse race, never won a single purse.